have questions for you today. We've been uh, working on it. Um, from the smoking bill to gun bills to House Bill 1570. So um, do you have anything to uh, kick off or do you want some of the questions? Well, the yeah, students? I've got a question related to the legislative process. Is anybody familiar with what yesterday was? Yesterday was a major date in the legislative process. Does anybody know what, what yes, why yesterday was significant? Halfway. So, you talk a little bit about that. I think I was right. Well, look on the board. What was? There's 60 days in the legislative process, and I well, think halfway. There it is. We're okay. just about halfway, but it means something. So okay. yesterday, I'll re I'll remind you. Oh, somebody back there know it? No, it's, it's when the it's when the house bills go into the two different houses, right? Very, very close. Very close. Yesterday was the fiscal cutoff. Friday was the policy cutoff. So that means any bill that just dealt with policy, if it didn't leave out of its committee by last Friday, it would be considered a dead bill. And then yesterday, <clears throat> so since Friday, the fiscal committees, which in the House, it's the House Appropriations Committee and the House Finance Committee, and in the Senate, it's the Senate Ways and Means Committee. Those committees have been meeting. One of them met on Saturday and worked all day long. And then Monday and Tuesday, all day long, those committees met to move fiscal bills out of their respective committees. So if a fiscal bill did not make it out of their committee yesterday, it's, it, it would be considered dead. And so now we enter, today is the first day of floor action. So all of the bills came out of their committees, and now the next week, the members of the House of Representatives and the Senate will be convening on the floor of their chamber, and they'll be considering all the different bills that make it onto their calendar. And on February, I think the cutoff date is February 23rd or 24th, is the House of Origin cutoff, where all the bills, uh, or excuse me, it's next week, it's Valentine's Day. Um, that's when all the bills need to get out of their or their, their origin, the house of origin, and that's, I think, the deadline you were thinking of, um, that's next week. So we are in a big week this week with floor action. That's usually a really fun and active time to watch floor debates and have, watch the membership pick up um, a, a debate on all the different bills. <laughs> Question? Oh yeah. Um, what kind of legis what kind of legislation what kind of legislation is Joe Fitzgibbon working on? Um, Joe Fitzgibbon has been really involved with the carbon tax bill. Um, he's been also, I mean, he's he's a chair of a committee. So he's chair of the environment committee in the House of Representatives. So he deals with a lot, he often sponsors bills that um, relate to our natural environment, whether they're natural resources or their environmental regulations. Um, he's often involved in those, but he's been most active in a bill related to the carbon tax. Do you know what the carbon tax is, what that has to do with? Yeah. Global warming. I can't. I didn't know that I'll, I'll say that. Just cutting off. Global warming? It, it does, yes. What they're attempting to do is get people to reduce their government emissions, businesses and people themselves. And they do that by taxing the emissions. So if you are a polluter and you're putting a lot of carbon in the atmosphere, you're going to have to pay a higher tax than somebody who doesn't emit as much carbon. So correct. Good job. Okay. Um, so nice and loud. Go up there. So the money for the carbon tax, where is that going to? Uh, the carbon money collected via your gas via gasoline prices, and that's where part of the debate is not supportive of the carbon tax because most of the people who will be paying it will be people 
who are drivers um, and they then they want to um, apply the funding to programs that um, assist with reducing carbon. So maybe that what we call our carbon sinks. So a forest is a carbon sink, for example. So if you have a big giant forest, it, it collects it collects carbon and helps reduce carbon in the atmosphere. So some of the money would go towards incentivizing people to have forests or have natural areas that um, like wetlands or agricultural areas where they would be carbon sinks. Um, other things would be put money towards restoration activities. So you build up those natural areas to help reduce um, or help collect the carbon in the atmosphere. It's actually going to a lot of different programs. Uh, you going up there about what we talked about, guns or smoking or anything. You know, well, you guys are following the housing bill. Do you know where that bill is in the process? Did it die in the policy committee or did it die in the fiscal committee? No. No. Where is it at? It's in a really good, it's it's in the exact spot it needs to be. It is on the house floor calendar. So that means um, probably it could even happen today that they will pass that bill off the House floor and send it over to the Senate for the Senate to take it up. So if it makes it all the way through the process, could it still be vetoed? It still can be vetoed, yep. But uh, Jay Inslee, right, he is a big supporter, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's, so we're, we're probably in good shape if it passes the Senate. I think Jay Inslee has said that he would support such a bill. Am I right on that? That's correct. Uh, okay. what, what current situations or issues are you working on right now? I am working on a bill right now that is called Secure Medicine Take Back. And that is a program that you guys have in King County. Snohomish County has one, Pierce County and Kitsap County is, is going to have one that <clears throat> collects medicine either over-the-counter medicine or prescription medicine, you can take it to a pharmacy um, or some collection site and the medicine is collected and then disposed of in a proper way. Um, and the, I, the, the advantage of having a, a medicine take-back program is law enforcement has discovered since the recent opioid epidemic that most people who are taking opioids um, and becoming addicted or are suffering from overdoses or drug addiction problems, many of them are getting these drugs from the medicine cabinet. So if you break your arm and you have pain medicine left over, people are handing it off to other people. And that has created a pretty significant epidemic in our society where people have become addicted to a prescription drug and then they move on and start using illicit drugs. So law enforcement, along with public health and the medical community, is, has, have designed a program to get medicine out of people so people can say, you know, I don't know what to do with these drugs because it's not safe to flush them down the toilet. It's not safe to bury them because um, then the chemicals get into our drinking water systems and our in our in our soils that uh, instead you want to incinerate them you want them out of the environment totally and so this is a program that would be instead of having it county by county you would have it um, there would be a statewide program and we are hopeful that um, the opponents of that bill that we have worked on a reconciliation of the language in the bill and I'm hopeful that that bill will be taken up today um, in the House and will move out of the House and over to the Senate sometime this week. So basically, uh, this bill is meant for, is, this bill is basically meant for uh, the, the opioid, the, the drug uh, academic in Washington and and, and the point of it is to find a better way to clean it. It's 
to find a way to dispose of the of prescription and over the donor medications. Yes. Good. Thank you. Good. Um, so when we were watching a movie and um, we saw one of these um, countries where they, they had like drugs were not, they couldn't arrest anybody for drugs. Portugal. And Portugal, I think. Portugal. Portugal. And, um, and that reduced people using drugs. Um, do you think that's a good idea? Do you, do, do you think that's a good idea or no? Um, I'd have to think about that a little bit more. I know that I've, I've read about some of those studies um, that have occurred in other countries where I think what you're describing is where they um, they don't have as much of penalties for using some, some softer drugs. And so like in our state, that would be, you know, we kind of have that approach with marijuana where people think that marijuana isn't as bad as other um, types of drugs like um, like like methamphetamine, for example. Um, you know, I don't know. I'm not a I'm not a professional in that community in the substance community to know exactly what the right thing is to do. Um, but I think it does depend. Just because it works in Portugal doesn't necessarily mean it could work here. But it is an idea to explore and understand that there's different approaches to um, solving problems. And we should explore all of them and see and, and consider what might work best in our society. What's happening with the smoking bill? The smoking bill, um, we have one bill. Um, it is 1054 that is in the house. Um, I believe I have not looked. Um, we could probably could we look it up here really fast. I forget if it's in rules or if it's on the house floor calendar. Let's take a look. That was to increase the smoking age from 18 to 21. Was that right? We talked about it two weeks ago. Uh, oh, you're there. Oh, you're there. So we can see all the bills in uh, the oh, computer system. Looks like it can't go in. Oh, it's in house rules. rules. There we go. There we go. I saw that. Um, it's in house rules. rules. So what so that, that means, means is sometime this week before, before next Wednesday, um, the rules committee will have to pull that bill and put it on what they call second, second reading. reading. And, and if it's, it's when this says, says at the bottom, bottom of the page right there, it says, says refer to rules to review. That means I mean, the rules committee is going to consider that bill and consider bringing it to the floor for action. And so if I, so as a lobbyist, what I would, what I'll be doing is talking to members of the rules committee and finding somebody who will say, yes, I would, when I, at my next opportunity, I will pull that bill. And then once that happens, it, it, Place, place on the house floor calendar, calendar, and then we start, start working on members and leadership in the house to, to consider that, that vote on taking a vote on that bill. Uh, what about our gun laws? The gun laws. Uh, I can't remember all of it was last, it was last week. It was last week. The, the bump stock bill. bill. So the bill, and I, I don't have these bill numbers at the top of my head, but it's a Senate bill. Um, it's sponsored by Senator Van de Wijk. Is, um, it moved over the House, or excuse me, the Senate took a major vote last week and passed that bill out of the Senate on a bipartisan vote. And, and sent it over to, to the house. house. So, so that, that bill is already, already over the house where, where it will be considered. I think they're having a hearing on it on Friday. Um, um, and then the, and house, the house will take up the bump stock bill. And the bump stock bill, bill relates to the shooting um, down in Vegas where that shooter used a device applied to a, a, a normal, uh, you know, a standard rifle that essentially made the rifle behave like a machine gun. And so, and so that, that device, device called the bump stock is, would be prohibited, prohibited in our state um, from, from possessing, possessing, owning, or possessing, or selling, or selling those. those. And, and that, that bill is moving along. along. 
Um, there's one other bill, gun bill, that people are hopeful of. It's a House bill. And it's actually from last year, I believe we talked about it. Remember, um, or I know we talked about it. This has to do with when law enforcement collect, um, us collect weapons at, at a crime scene. At the local level, they have the choice to either sell the guns or dispose of the guns. And some law enforcement agencies dispose of them. They get rid of them. However, the Washington State Patrol, so the people, the, the police uh, department at the state level, they don't get that option. They are, the way the law is currently written is they have to sell those guns. And they conducted a study and discovered that a lot of the guns that are resold from a crime scene end up in another crime scene. And so they would like the option to get these guns off the street, get them out of the supply chain, and have the ability to destroy those guns. Um, and so some of the folks here who are um, interested in gun safety laws um, are hopeful that that bill will also get passed. So we'll see two, um, hopefully see two bills that address uh, a dead that that weapons, weapons um, this legislative, legislative session. Those are the two to watch. So, um, say that uh, if this if that bill passes, the one where um, the gun the the where the pistol turned into a kind of like a machine gun. Say, what if like my friend had one, um, like a bone stock thing, and um, he, would he have to throw it away? Um, he would have to get rid of it. Yes. I believe I it's a date, 2019, that these items are considered contraband. contraband. So contraband, so contraband means of the, an the illegal, illegal item, item would, would be fine, um, and potentially, maybe depending on, on what your what record, record is, you may even have to serve time for possessing, possessing um, one, one of these devices. devices. Cartoons, do you have your question? Yeah. When asked that? Is it uh, a is, going up? Yeah. Okay. Um, my question was, what is Jay in Ainsley doing about the carbon tax? Jay is a big promoter of the carbon tax, and he would really, every year he has introduced a carbon tax, since becoming governor um, six years ago, he has wanted to pass legislation related to carbon reduction. Um, so he's a big supporter of it. He's hopeful that the legislature um, does something with the carbon tax. Um, there are reasons why the why the legislature might not want to consider imposing a tax on the on the citizens of Washington State. And if they choose not to pass this legislation, there are other efforts um, called an, an initiative process. And there are groups that will probably take this on an initiative where we would vote on it as, as voters. Um, where we would say yes or no that we want this proposed to one us and help help to reduce the So even if the bill doesn't pass, in the legislature, we will still continue to talk about it because there are community groups that will bring it for us as voters to consider. Thank you. Brenda, I have a quick question. A couple of my students were asking about the initiative process and getting um, signatures. And I know on the website, I think it's, I don't know, 60 or 80 in terms of the number of signatures. A uh, student wanted to know, what if you only got signatures on this side of the mountains? I mean, does it, could you, uh, or it could be anywhere in Washington state, or do you have to actually get signatures in order to get on the, uh, on, on the, on, on the vote in November? Do you have to get in every district or every county? Or how does that work, do you know? Um, I, don't I don't believe you need, I think the signatures can come from wherever they come from. Okay. Similar to once the initiative goes on the ballot, if it gets passed in, um, 
you know, you know just, just two counties, counties which has happened recently, recently with different types of legislation. Um, the bill that those initiatives have become law for the entire state, even if the majority of the legislative districts voted no. Um, if there's enough votes, go by, you know, it's by population, it's by the number of sheer number of votes, then they become law. Um, that's, that's there's, there's a lot, a lot of grief surrounding, surrounding the sound of transit, transit tax. So, so your parents, parents might be really upset when they go in to get a, register their, their car. car. They, they have, have discovered, discovered that, that price of registering your car has gone up dramatically. And that's and because, because as voters in Snohomish, King, and Pearson County, we passed a a, a, a series, series of taxes, of taxes on ourselves, ourselves in order to build, build sound transit projects, projects, the train projects, projects around our town, and, 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 and help help address, address the, the congestion. congestion. Well, well, the the, old, the most, most urban districts, districts within, within those three counties, counties voted yes, yes. And, those and those were the counties, counties or the districts, districts with the most with, with the pretty high population. And so, and so there's, there's a lot, a lot of, frustration of frustration from, from districts, districts in Pierce County, County because, because Pierce County, County actually across the board did not, not support the South Carolina tax. tax. You were to just vote in Pierce, Pierce County, County, it wouldn't it have passed, passed, but there were enough votes in King and Snohomish County, County, it did. It and so there are Pierce County legislators who are trying to claw back on some of those taxes and reverse occurred. Um, they, they have not been successful, successful but, but there's still, still a lot, lot of consternation over that because people, people just were not expecting their, their, the cost to be that, that high when they register their car, or, or even if there's even taxes on, on uh, their, their property, property as well as a part of their gas. gas. But those have been as The most dramatic increase was to registering your car with the Department of Licensing. Any other issues you guys want to talk about education or some of you asked about the youth prison being built or uh, any interest or any kind of process of where things are here's your chance yeah. come on up. we talked about youth prisons yeah. we talked about education talk about that uh, is the government involved with uh, the building of the youth prison um, I don't, I don't know, know very much about the uh, I think it, it is, is primarily funded at, at the county, county level. level. You're talking you're about the King County Youth Prison, correct? Yes, yes. I think yes. it's yes. mostly being built with, with county, county funds. funds. I'm, sure I'm sure there are some, some state, state funds, funds, funds that have either matched it or are contributing to it, but I do believe that it's being built through a levy, a tax that they collect for juvenile justice. Um, um, but, but I, I don't, don't know very much of that, other, other than what I just heard. <laughs> Esther, you got a question, Esther? Okay. Good. Well, um, so we were about, uh, we're, we're, we're kind of wondering. I know Lori, our, uh, she's in uh, actually Rwanda uh, doing oh. a lot of work, so she's kind of uh, out of the loop for a while. She's, she's doing some work with an all-girls school there in education, doing great work. Uh, and I know Youth Day is coming up, but we're going to be on midwinter break. So we've been emailing people, so we can't actually get down there on Youth Day. That's a little oh, disappointing. Uh, right. I think maybe we're going to send one or two students. We're still coordinating that. Um, is there um, – I'm, I'm just kind of wondering. We loved – so would you recommend that we come down to Olympia before – um, you know, in the next 30 days, or would it be better? Will, will all the, will like uh, Joe Fitzgibbon, uh, Sharon Nelson, would these people be away from Olympia in like 40 or 50 days? Correct. Okay, when, so when we should conclude on March. The leg most, most legislators work, work out, out of this district. district. They okay. Don't work here as well. So March 8th, we should Sharon come down Nelson, by. That might be a different case. She's majority leader, but. Most, Most often, often find in the district during the year around. So if so you, you guys schedule, schedule a trip before March, then, then you get, get an opportunity to see your, your legislators. legislators. Okay. So because we, we you know, like you said, we we visited a tent city three. These kids have worked really hard on 
Uh, every day we read articles about the Homeless Project in the Seattle Times, we watch videos, we're doing things. So we'd like to um, uh, be part of some of that process. Yeah. Um, so with okay. 15 seven, you could, you had to have a day or tomorrow, right? right? Legislators, right. legislators right. tell them how important it is for them to keep that, that bill up for a vote on, on the House floor. Okay. Um, and be a yes yeah. on that. I, I, knowing knowing your legislators, legislators, I think they are a yes, yes, but it still doesn't help, help for them to know, know or it's, it's always, always helpful help for them to know. And I think they're always encouraging legislators to, to, to see that these are involved with the process. Good. It, it well, makes it fulfilling for them. So, well, I think after we get off the phone, I have their phone number and I'm, we're going to call down right after here and I'll have, we'll talk about our, our district, our two house, and then we can actually quickly, and then tomorrow we'll write a letter as well. So we'll do that. So. Well, thank you so much, uh, and we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. Enjoy your day. Yep. Bye-bye.